Thank you, Anna. It's a pleasure to be back and to provide an opportunity to update everyone on the next generation COVID-19 vaccine, our continued progress there, as well as with Gadaptin. So these two products, in our opinion, provide a compelling opportunity for investing in GeoVax. They both address critically important unmet medical needs. They provide differentiated products. We have near-term stock catalysts Catalyst, and we've done this before, so we know what we're doing, and we look forward to giving updates as we proceed. The key milestones on which we've been focused this year and continue to through the fourth quarter is our next generation COVID-19 vaccine. I'll just remind you, we have three, three phase two clinical trials underway, one of which is, uh, in, is fully enrolled, another which is funded on a non-dilutive basis through a family foundation. Gadeptin, which is addressing uh, advanced head and neck cancers as a therapy there, is also being funded through non-dilutive -dilu means. It's being funded currently by the FDA under the Orphan Drugs Clinical Trials Program. And those are the key assets that I'm going to focus on in today's presentation. Gadeptin is a very exciting mechanism of action. It operates by, by targeting solid tumors that can either be benign or cancerous. Uh, they're agnostic of the type of, of tumors. Uh, we deliver the PMP enzyme or Gadeptin into a tumor. It's then followed by the infusion of Fludera, which is an established chemotherapeutic agent for hematologic cancers. It does nothing by its own against solid tumors, but when it encounters a tumor, it's been treated with Gadeptin. It actually converts to another compound which has very high unprecedented level of, of destroying the tumor. So this provides a, an opportunity to go after different types of tumors, be able to eradicate them without having to go through chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, et cetera. In the United States, for our initial indication, there are approximately 15,000 individuals. These are those people, unfortunately, who have failed on all other types of therapies related to head and neck cancers. There are about 15,000 who die annually in the United States. They're on palliative care. There are approximately 400,000 worldwide. That is our initial target market. We're going after them. Uh, through this program and expect to expand it in the near future. So once we complete the program, for which currently there are two remaining patients to be uh, enrolled and completed, uh, we expect to have the program completed probably by the end of first quarter uh, next year, so not too long from there. We will then uh, propose to the FDA an expanded phase two program, probably around 40 to 60 patients. We think that'll be adequate to be able to demonstrate uh, not only at a higher dose, the, the positive responses without any concerns of side effects, but also to be able to go forward, uh, hopefully on an expedited registration pathway. We then plan to expand the applications of Gadeptin to other solid tumors that we're looking at and considering right now, but also information has come forward from studies we've been supporting, preclinical studies right now of gadeptin in conjunction with immune checkpoint inhibitors. Shows very encouraging results in, in the combination effect being greater than either therapy individually addressing the, uh, the elimination of solid tumors in certain patients. We do expect to develop and commercialize this product on a global basis. We hold worldwide rights and we currently are, are actively involved in discussions uh, with potential partners. But again, one never knows until you finalize an agreement, but we'll be heading over next week to the, uh, to the Bio Europe partnering meeting, which is in Munich, talking to, to various uh, potential partners with, about this asset and how it can be broadly developed on a global basis. GEOCMO4S1 is our next generation COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, we have re recognized recently through the publication in September of data 
uh, in, uh, from one of our phase two trials that, that this product thus far has shown to be agnostic of variants. One of the big challenges with, with COVID vaccines has been that as variants continue to emerge, starting with the initial strain out of Wuhan, all the way through the Delta, the Omicron, more recently the EG5 uh, variant, that we see that the current vaccines have to continuously be reconfigured. They come out, they don't provide the coverage that we had hoped for. Their durability appears to be more like two to four months, and we just aren't getting what we'd like to see. Our vaccine was in published data that came out in September showed that its durability is six to eight months. We think it'll be uh, it, probably more like a year and once we uh, continue to evaluate it. But even more so, without having to reconfigure uh, our vaccine, it's been shown to show protective potent immunity from the original ancestral strain all the way through Delta, Omicron, and what is known as the Omicron XBB 1.5, which through August was the primary variant that was of, of most concern. What we're expecting and, and beginning to see that the data is supportive of is a broader, more durable protection than the existing authorized vaccines, uh, it, largely because we induce both antibody as well as cellular immunity. And what's nice about our vaccine is that the, the technology or the platform upon which it is constructed is recognized throughout the world as being very safe, highly potent, very durable, and also requiring minimal refrigeration or can actually be freeze-dried or lyophilized, which means it can be delivered and administered anywhere in the world without having to worry about frozen state and, and how long will it be good for after you do thaw it. One of the critical points of differentiation in our vaccine is the fact that by including two elements of the virus, versus simply one, which is what all the other vaccines do. We include the spike protein, which is intended to induce a strong antibody response. That's very important in the early stages of infection. The other vaccines also include uh, and address the spike protein, but we also encode the nucleocapsid protein, which is shown to be conserved across uh, all coronaviruses. And, and what we mean here is that it is it does not um, change as as the virus changes. It continues to stand its ground, so to speak. Also, it induces a very strong uh, cellular immune response, or T cells, and they are critical in preventing and reducing the risk of severe disease, hospitalization, and death. So this multi-antigenic component or dual antigen component that we have in our uh, next generation vaccine is what is giving us the very broader response, the more durable response, and the ability to address certain populations such as those who have compromised immune systems whose bodies no longer respond to an antibody stimulation. There are, in fact, in the United States, approximately 15 million individuals who have compromised immune systems. What has happened is as the result of certain types of conditions, could be cancers, renal disease, they may have sickle cell anemia, be HIV positive, et cetera, et cetera, that these individuals' bodies have been depleted in their ability to respond adequately to antibody stimulation. This means that the current vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, the protein adjuvant vaccines, or even the monoclonal antibody therapies are not going to provide them the, the type of protection or the type of therapy that they had hoped to receive. There are approximately 240, almost 250 million such individuals worldwide. By approaching this by inducing not only strong antibody, but also strong uh, cellular immunity, we're able to see a very strong response that protects these individuals and enables them a much more durable response also. We have, as I've mentioned earlier, three phase two clinical trials underway. One is among healthy individuals who have initially been vaccinated with an mRNA vaccine. We recently announced completion of this enrollment. The target was 60 patients. We actually completed with 63. Uh, in this regard, we're hoping to show a, a, a broader, more durable booster than what we're seeing with the current vaccines. And so uh, we'll begin to see data yet this year coming out of this study. 
We also have an immunocompromised trial that is among chronic lymphocytic leukemia patients that's currently enrolling. This is, trial is actually being funded by a private foundation, uh, so it's non-dilutive to our balance sheet. But also in this one, we're seeing a, a very strong uh, pace of enrollment, and we expect to see uh, some data on this patient perhaps yet this year. Finally, we have among immunocompromised patients stem cell transplant patients. This uh, site is, is now going on. It's enrolling. It's expanding. We've recently announced uh, the uh, expansion to three sites uh, in the United States, and we expect to add additional sites. So we expect that we'll be able to demonstrate among various populations of immunocompromised patients a broader, more durable type of protection with our vaccine. Recently in vaccines, a peer uh, reviewed journal, we had a publication of our vaccine which showed as, as was highlighted in the abstract that the vaccine demonstrated potent activity against the ancestral virus all the way through uh, variants of concern through the Omicron XBB 1.5 variant. Uh, we're not aware of any other vaccine that has been able to demonstrate this that has not gone through reconfigurations. So far, our vaccine continues to to strongly indicate that it is indeed variant agnostic. Many of you are aware of the federal government program announced in April called Project Next Gen. That was a program looking for broader, more durable COVID-19 vaccines. It's a $5 billion uh, program for funding. Uh, it was initiated in, in, uh, in April, and what we've seen more recently is there have been two announcements of initial awards uh, of the five billion that was uh, set aside and has been budgeted for this. There remains over three billion to be funded. We're in active discussions with the Project Next Gen team, uh, sharing our information with them. We've submitted a full proposal, and we hope to be reporting some update in the uh, in the near future yet this year. Development plan for our next gen COVID-19 vaccine is to validate the differentiation of GEO CMO4S1 addressing immunocompromised patients, showing more broader, more durable protection that it indeed does not need to be continuously reconfigured, and that uh, by through commercialization and marketing activities, that our product will become the preferred vaccine for those with compromised immune. Uh, systems, and we expect to also develop this and commercialize it globally. We're active in discussions with potential partners at this point. So in conclusion, we see GFX as a compelling investment with differentiated products addressing most critical on net medical needs, and we look forward to updating you in future discussions. Thank you.